our program is much more than an eat less, exercise more diet, and much more than take this little gimmick supplement or this shot. Uh, I, the reason I'm saying this right from the beginning is because I want you to watch this entire video. I want you to go on my website, read all the information. Uh, we're not trying to sell you some gimmick supplement, some type of uh, weight loss product, uh, but we are trying to give you some real insight on your body, your body's chemistry, how your body works with the exercise. So some of the stuff I'm going to talk today might be a lot different than what you've seen in the past, but I just want to be very upfront and say, hey, I'm not trying to sell you this little supplement or this, this gimmick. I'm going to let you know probably the three reasons why you're not losing weight despite good nutrition and exercise. Um, I want you to think a little bit more. This is more of, of a class on, on, on physiology and biochemistry and nutrition. Then, after I go over that information, you'll be able to understand. Hopefully something will click on you and you can understand why you're not losing weight or why one person loses weight and another person can't lose weight. Um, so from there, let me ask you, have you ever noticed one person goes on one particular diet and does great and drops weight and another person goes on the exact same diet and doesn't lose any weight? Uh, this happens with all the type of diets out there. There's the zone diet, the Mediterranean diet, the blood type diet, uh, Atkins. There's so many diets out there. Why is there not one that just works? Wouldn't it make sense if there was just one diet and it really worked? Everybody would just go on that one diet and everybody would drop weight? Uh, maybe you've done this. You've heard someone that has dropped weight on this particular diet program. So you do that and, and nothing happens. You don't, you, you're very strict with it and yet you don't drop any, any, any weight. Um, why is it that one person does very little exercise and stays very little lean? One person seems they can eat all the food they want and never gain weight. Gain weight. Some people are exercising relentlessly and not losing weight. Maybe that's you. Are you going to the spin class for an hour every night, running every day, and based on your calories burn, calories in, you should be dropping weight? It becomes very frustrating, and I understand that. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, there's basically three reasons why you're not losing weight and three reasons that need to be to be a, a, addressed and it's this is a lot different than what most programs are are, are are being put out there most people are saying yes eat less exercise more um, buy this little supplement here uh, you know most of that stuff just doesn't work let, let me ask you one thing have you ever seen an overweight doctor or nurse of course you have if there was one little gimmick supplement out there, one little shot that worked, went all these guys beyond it and girls beyond it, nurses beyond it, and being lean, they're not. Walk into any hospital, any medical clinic, you see a bunch of overweight doctors and a bunch of overweight nurses. So the very first thing I, I want you to do is be careful who you're taking weight loss advice for. You know, look into them, look into their background. Are you taking weight loss advice from an overweight doctor? Okay, I mean, are, are you doing this? I mean. It, it, are you walking the walk, talking the talk? What's going on? You know, personally, I used to be at 270 pounds. I'm about 205 now. I've kept it off for 10 years. But you know what? When I was 270 pounds, I was a doctor. I admit it. I tried using some of these gimmick supplements. None of it works. As I started getting into this biochemistry and, and physiology a lot more and being a lot more interested, I've definitely found a program that works. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. So. It seems like most people are, when they think about weight loss, they do think about diet and nutrition. And let's talk about that. That is a foundation. But let me tell you one thing. Most people are doing something wrong. So number one thing is people are doing wrong. They're eating the wrong type of food or they are on the wrong diet for that specific person. Now, I'm, I'm, this isn't going to be a talk about, about uh, fats and carbohydrates um, and what ratios are, are the best. What I'm going to talk about is what food is specifically right for you. Now, if you're looking into some of the weight loss programs out there, you, you'll see eat right for your blood type, um, eat right for your body style. If you have a pear-shaped body style, you're a thyroid or body type and you need to be eating for that specific body type. Uh, there's metabolic testing uh, where they, they, they're talking about eat for your natural ability or your genes, your specific person. Um, 
And there is a lot of truth to that, but we're to take it a little bit beyond that. Yes, it does make sense, doesn't it, that if my ancestors grew up in Sweden for hundreds and thousands of years and ate food specific to Sweden and my wife's family spent her generations and thousands of years in the Arizona desert eating different foods that you're going to basically be a custom and body genetically is going to be adapted to different type of foods. Um, and that's kind of what the, the, the metabolic is talked about. So basically, you're not going to tolerate certain foods, so we need you to eat these specific type of, of foods. The problem is, it's all guesswork. You look at your body style and you follow this specific diet and say, oh, I fit this little body style. I should be eating these specific type of foods. Or I take a questionnaire, 25 you know, question questionnaire. Some of them are hundreds of questions. And based on that, they find out what type of program or metabolic type you're going to fit into. And I agree with that. Uh, here's the issue, though. Science has caught up with this. Okay, and, 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 and that's, that's so important. Um, we have food allergies, we have food sensitivities, and I'm not talking about allergies, maybe you know someone, you know these people get a peanut allergy, okay, that's very simple. Someone take a peanut has an allergy, they can have a very severe reaction to that, to that peanut. Um, and so food has a definite reaction on on your body, on your body's physiology. There are certain people that are very allergic you know, to salt, uh, shellfish and they, they, they could die from these food allergies. Here's the key, there's a lot of different type of food sensitivities that you may have. You might be very sensitive to oranges, apples, grapes, uh, wheat, uh, different meats. So, you, but, but how do you know? How, how do you know if you have these? Because um, maybe some of these food sensitivities are are so subtle that they don't cause this big reaction, but they cause a cellular response with your body that activates the body's immune system to to react. And if your immune system to react, you could cause inflammation, and that could lead to digestive problems, uh, stubborn weight gain, just basically a whole variety of diseases. So. Instead of talking about you need to be eating, you know, so many carbohydrates or fats or uh, fruits and vegetables, here's the way what we do. We do a nutritional blood test, okay? We could take a, a sample of your blood and then we send that to the lab and they test the cellular's response to hundreds of different type of food categories. So when we get that nutritional blood test back, we're going to be basically given a list of foods that you should be avoided, somewhat avoided, or that you have no reaction to. With that, we've narrowed down your nutrition. We got you, your food list so specific now. Maybe you're someone who should be avoiding oranges because you have a nutrition, uh, some type of reaction to, to oranges. Uh, how would you know? The oranges are healthy, right? I mean, fruits and vegetables. I mean, but if you have a response to that. So we're customizing your nutrition specifically for you. And this is why one diet may work for one person and the sex same diet won't work for another person. Because maybe one person has a food sensitivity, it's a certain one, another person doesn't. You know, you are different than your wife or your husband, than your kids, than your parents, than your next door neighbor. So, number one, why people are not losing weight is they have reactions to certain type of foods that they don't know of. How do you find out what foods are best for you and what foods you're sensitive to? Well, you don't unless you get tested. Okay? So you could spend tons of money on various diet plans or buying Weight Watchers products or uh, all these prepackaged meals, but you might be sensitive to chemicals, to food allergies, to, to uh, to colorings within food. So where we start first is we're not going to talk about ratios, increase your carbs, decrease your carbs, uh, eat more fruits. And we don't know. So number one is you're eating the wrong type of foods. We need to make specific, specific foods specifically for you. The number two thing that we need to address 
wrong exercise. Okay? Wrong exercise. Again, let me go back. Do you know someone that works out constantly at the gym and is not losing any type of weight? I'm sure you know, maybe you're one of them. I'm sure you've heard of it. But somebody's running five days a week and they're not losing weight. What do I need to do? I need to exercise more and eat less, right? That's, that's the common, you know, uh, prescription, right? You know, exercise more, eat less. Well, how do you know, okay? Here's one thing that, that, that our body does and reacts. We all have different heart rates, okay? We all have, rest. I have buddies, I, I do a lot of, um, running and, and triathlons with my friends and we love, we wear heart rate monitors and we're on the bikes at the same time together. There's many times I will be out biking at a heart rate of 110 and my buddy who's my exact same age will be 160. Okay, different, your body burns different foods at different um, exercise heart rates, okay? So what do you need to do with this, okay? You need to be exercising at a level that promotes fat burning in your body, okay? How do you know where you're burning fat? Well, you don't, unless you get tested for it, okay? This is, again, science has called up with this technology, okay? We use a, a, a test, what's called a metabolic exercise test. This exercise test has been around for a long time. However, um, you mostly only find it in universities or elite training centers for, for athletes. Uh, most clinics don't have it, most doctor's offices don't have, this, have it, most uh, personal trainers don't have it. You might be asking yourself, if, if this test is so important, why doesn't everybody have it? Well, because it costs probably around twenty twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 for the technology to do this, to do this test. Um, and that's why. Um, we're getting, this is this is physiology and this is science, okay? So what we'll do with the, the the exercise metabolic test is we have you wear a, a, a mask, and what this mask does is as you exercise, as we have you walk uh, or run or, or bike, the you, you're breathing into this into this mask, and it, this goes into a sensor, and what the sensor does is it measures the ratios of carbon dioxide and oxygen you're, you, you're, you're kicking out while you're, while you're exercising. At certain ratios of carbon dioxide to oxygen, we could determine what you're, you are using as fuel, whether you're burning carbohydrates, fats, um, or proteins. And so what we do when we get this test, is I'm going to show you a little bit of graph here on what the test does. And this will explain why you may be exercising all the time and not losing any weight at, uh, at all. And why another person exercises very little and does great on, on weight loss. So what we do with the test, what we're going to do is we're going to get a graph. And on this graph, what we're going to do is we have a graph right here. And what we're going to do is we will get you walking on the treadmill, and we'll turn that treadmill up, and we'll get you walking a little bit faster and a little bit faster. And what we'll get here is we'll get heart rate. So this is heart rate right here. We'll get your heart rate here, and heart rate will gradually peak up as we go. So let's say right here we're at 150, and at here we're at 150. 110. Okay, what we'll also do then is we're going to measure your heart rate as you're going up and the, the sensor is going to be able to tell what you're burning as the source of fuel. And what we're looking for is where you are burning mostly fat as your source of fuel. So what we'll also get, and if you go onto the, the, my, the website that has um, the stuff about the VO2 metabolic test or metabolic exercise test, you could look a lot more about this and actually see the, um, the actual graphs from the computer that this prints out. And what we'll do here is we'll get another level of fat burning. So this is, let's say we're burning a lot of fat, a lot of fat, and then we get this thing happens right here. So this is, this is fat. Okay, 
So now what we have here is what we did is we put you through a test. We're, the heart rate's going up here a little bit. Uh, the computer is, is measuring the ratios of carbon dioxide, oxygen you're kicking out, and it's telling us we're, we're burning the most fat. So what we'll see here is we go up here, we're burning a lot of fat, then as we get into this particular right here, the fat drops dramatically. Now these numbers, 110, 150, um, they're specific to you. They're, ju they're just like the nutritional test. It's specific for you. Even though you might be the exact same age as one of your buddies, you have different responses, okay? You have different resting heart rates, you have different exercise heart rates, you might be jogging together and one person might be at 100 heartbeats per minute and your buddy might be at 150. That doesn't mean necessarily one's fitter than the other or one is burning fatter. or we don't really know. All these, these heart rate numbers mean nothing unless we do this test and actually see what the data is. But this is what, why a lot of you might be exercising a lot and not losing any weight. Because let's say right up in here, this point right here is 120. So what we're seeing here is at 120, there's very little fat burning, okay? And at one, let's say 10 here, 110, 105, you're burning a lot of fat. Now again, we don't know what these numbers mean until we strap them on a monitor on you and put you in that spin class. But here's what a lot of people are doing. A lot of people are in that spin class, running, biking as hard as they can. They're out jogging, they're, climbing, they're doing the stair stepper, and they are right here, let's say. They're at 150. At 150, they're burning very little fat at all. So what happens is most people are not working enough into where your body is burning the fat, so there, as you see at 150 here, there's very little fat being burned. Now what happens is we have enough sugar in our body to last hours, two, three hours of fairly high intensity exercise running or biking. So what happens here is you're exercising right here. Your body is not getting very much fat, if any of fat, as a source of fuel. So your body is totally burning sugars if you're exercising at this level. Now you have enough sugar in your system to, to run, let's say, for three hours before you bonk, before you run out of sugars and you collapse and pass out because you have no sugar. So you're doing that spin class every night, right here, burning mostly sugars. Now so what happens, you're burning sugar, it's your sugar, you're burning the sugar, 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 but you're not doing it for two or three hours, so you're not passing out because of low blood sugar, okay? So what happens is you burn all the sugar and then your body is not getting any real energy, some fat and you're using up all your sugars and this is why you might be very hungry after an exercise session um, such as that. And what you're doing is just you're just causing your body to be more of a sugar burner, okay? You're not causing your body to be efficient at burning fat as the primary source of fuel. So, the second thing that we do in our program, first thing is a nutritional blood test to determine what specific foods you should be taking in and what should you should be avoiding. Next thing is this metabolic exercise test. Now, if you're not in our area, you could find, you know, you could Google VO2 metabolic test uh, and find a testing center that has this, or you may uh, uh, contact a, a local university that may have this test. Um, this test is used mainly for high-level um, high um, athletes, um, and you don't see it as much in, in the weight loss, and I said the main reason why is just cost, okay? Um, but the reason why this is used a lot in high athletes, so marathoners, Ironman triathletes, is because if you're going to do a triathlon that lasts anywhere from 8 hours to 17 hours, you need to take energy from your body's fat stores. If you're not able to take energy from your fat stores, that means you're dependent on eating during the entire you know, eight to 17 hour Ironman triathlon. So if you're doing your training or all uh, your racing in this area here, like I just mentioned, your body's getting very little fat as fuel. And so you need to be constantly taking in food. If you're constantly taking in food and you're doing a race, you have that chance to get an upset stomach, uh, which you know GI problems, and that's very bad for a race. 
So a lot of the Ironman triathletes, marathoners, all these athletes, a key is, is to make their body very efficient of burn fat as their primary source of fuel. If they can make, train their body to burn fat as a source of fuel, they can get more energy from their own body and they'll have to take in less. So what happens is, this is why the, the, the athletes will do this exact same task and work in different fat burning zones to promote that. Um, why this hasn't really transferred over to the weight loss field, I think the only reason why it, it hasn't is because in weight loss, uh, there's so many gimmicks out there, uh, and as far as personal trainers go, there's no governing body for personal trainers. Um, I'm also a, a sports chiropractor. I had to have a certain level of education to become a doctor, and I have to take a certain level of continuing education to keep my license in Arizona, and there are certain exams I need to take. With personal training, there is none of that. You have a lot of trainers that have backgrounds in anatomy, physiology, master level degrees. You also have a bunch of guys that took an online course or a weekend seminar um, and, and say they're a personal trainer. So within you know, weight loss and personal training, you have these really gaps between you know, the, the certifications of, of, of a personal trainer. And so some people just say, hey, just exercise as hard as you can and you know, eat this. Or It's a lot more complicated for that. And, and, and that's why you have a hard time losing weight even despite your exercises. Now, once we get this data, that doesn't mean all we have to do is exercise at this level. There's a lot of different type of things that we're, we need to um, you know, do, uh, adjusting different programs. But once you have this data, you will actually see where you're burning fat as the primary source of fuel. And our goal is to, to develop that system. Remember, this is, this is biochemistry and physiology. Um, this is real science. Uh, these metabolic testing are done at universities on top level athletes. And it should be done for you. Okay? Um, the last thing that we're going to talk about, the last thing that, as far as weight loss, why you might not be losing weight, is optimal hormone levels. And right now, I'm not going to talk about all the different type of hormones out there, um, but there are different hormone levels that typically decrease with age. And a lot of the anti-aging um, industry is basically saying, well, why does it have to? Why can't we try to restore your hormone levels to that of you were when you were in your 20s? So one thing that gets typical, that testosterone in men decreases at the age. There's been a, a high association with low testosterone and stubborn body fat. Um, in women, DHEA, there's a, there's a lot of different type of hormones. So like I said, I'm not going to sit here and talk all, right now about all the different type of hormones and what ones could actually um, cause you to um, lose the weight or what hormones might be low um, that might be... Um, hindering your weight loss. But there are different type of hormone testing that can be done. And if you haven't done that, how do you know? So, kind of in a nutshell, what our program is initially is a lot of testing. Find out what, you know, find out. You can spend tons of money sampling all these, you know, different supplements out there. Um, everybody's looking for uh, the, the, the little supplement that's going to that's gonna start to, to suddenly lose weight, you know, and, and take this supplement and get me energy. And you know what? Like I said, no one's starting with the foundation. And that's what makes our program so different than, than all the other ones out there because I see this every day and I don't see anybody doing this. I get emails from medical clinics and doctors trying to promote their weight loss program to us. They want, they want us to buy their weight loss program. And in these emails and videos these docs are sending us, they're trying to tell us, you don't even have to have, be certified in nutrition. You don't even have to be in shape. Uh, one doctor said he made you know, X amount of money his first month doing this weight loss program, and he weighed 300 pounds. Come on, people. You're not that gullible. <laughs> okay? Um, just because someone's a doctor or someone's a personal trainer doesn't mean they know really what's going on. And it's customized for you. That's the bottom point. Okay? With our program, um, and you could, you know, if you're not in the area, I'm sure you might be able to find someone or email me. Uh, we could do some of this stuff, you know, 
on, online. Um, but what we need to do is we need to know, okay, we need to know what foods are specific for you. What foods that you have sensitivities to. Based on that, we can make then customize a new nutrition program specifically for you. Now, this is great for weight loss, with all types of health conditions. If you're an athlete, you need to seriously be looking into this program or, or that nutritional blood test. You spend all this money, $300 on bats, you're doing all this training, start the foundation. Start with finding out what foods are specifically right for you and what foods you should avoid. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to do nutritional blood test to find out what foods are specific to do. We're going to do a metabolic exercise test that's going to give us the data and it's going to give us a range of heart rate zones where you're using fat as for fuel, protein, or carbohydrates. Based on that, what we could do is we could develop an exercise program specifically for you based on your specific heart rates where you're burning fat. Last thing is hormonal testing and, and we may send you to an online lab, we may send you to a local lab for that. We'll get that data back and we'll just look at and see if these are in the optimal areas. Now once we get those three areas done, hormone, exercise test, nutrition test, we now have an insight uh, on your specific metabolism and, and how your body works. Without that, we don't, we don't know. We don't know. Um, so uh, I'm asking you, out of all the diets and nutrition plans and exercise and supplements, how much time have you really spent to look into your body and see what's actually happening to you? And if you're stubborn with your weight loss, uh, if you're stubborn with some type of chronic disease, aching joints, stomach problems, again, this isn't specific to weight loss. Um, you need to look into these type of testing which will really get an insight to you. Um, now as far as um, cost, I have some of the cost listed on the website. Some of this stuff may be covered with insurance. The way we do it is now in days insurance is, you know, Insurance is insurance. Uh, what we'll do is we'll give you the forms that you could submit um, to your insurance company uh, for, for reimbursement. Uh, this program, you could pay for these, these type of tests in our office with your health savings account or your flex account. Um, it, it's, it's very cost effective. We could also make whatever type of arrangements that you may need uh, to make to help get this done so you could lose the weight or get healthy. I've been there myself. I used to weigh 275 pounds. Uh, I'm about 205 now. I've kept it off for 10 years or, or so. Um, I know how frustrating weight loss could be. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm here to help. If you have any questions at all, uh, please give me a call. Drop me an email. Uh, look through my entire website. I really want this to be a course. I want you to understand what is going on with your with your body, um, with your body's biochemistry, and how, understand how it's burning fat and when it's burning fat, and what what foods you should be eating. Um, once you understand all that, you'll you'll get it. You'll you'll have the knowledge. You have the power uh, to lose weight. You have the power to to improve your sports performance, your overall health and well-being. I mean. You could order these online prepackaged meal plans, spend thousands of dollars on that. You don't learn nothing. You know, maybe it works for some people, maybe it doesn't. I mean, come on, you know the way this, you know, the, the movie industry is. These, I, I've had patients who've come in here, they're, uh, they're, they're bodybuilders, and they come in, in here, and they're, I'm toning up, and I'm, I'm working out because I'm auditioning for a commercial for this supplement or for this weight loss product and uh, you know they, they work out really hard get in great shape going for an audition of the product and then they get filmed endorsing the product when they next year never use the product um, so again our, our program is not a, a, a simple eat less eat um, exercise more program um, the only supplements we may suggest is is something to help restore your, your hormone levels if they are not optimal. If they're not optimal, then there's nothing we're going to do um, as far as supplements at, at all. Uh, 
the way I do it is we do all this this testing. Uh, then we, we sit down and, and develop your program uh, as far as your nutrition and your exercise. And then I offer you know a, a month follow up. You come in once a week, weigh you in, uh, test you, talk with you. I, I mean the last step I didn't really address is the follow up consultations that we want to do. I'm going to be your coach for next month, four months, six months, whatever you feel like you need. Um, we'll get all this testing down. Some people get all this testing down and run with it, and they're great. Some people need a little bit more coaching or follow up or want to talk to someone and. And you know, and we'll do that. We could do that in my office. Uh, we could do that over the phone. We could do it the email. Uh, we're here to help. So, if this is something that interests you and you'd like to talk more about it, uh, please give me a call or drop me an email. Years, you are what you eat. But can good food actually be bad for you, making you fat or even sick? A Florida-based company claims to have a blood test that will tell you what foods your body can't tolerate. Our Linda Hurtado has the story in today's Taking Action for Your Health report. You would think, being a professional football player... ...that Tampa Bay Buccaneer defensive tackle Chris Hovan would know everything about diet and exercise. It is definitely lunchtime. <laughs> And so would his family. Can you spit your gum out, please? But they recently learned that food sensitivity had a huge impact on their health. Peaches. And they made some changes. Like any diet, it's hard to stay away. They took away all my favorite stuff, I'm not going to lie. But at the same time, you can't put a price and you can't, you know, on, on your health. I can see that I've lost some of my body fat. Um, and I think that can only be beneficial to me as the season comes. Their diet changes came about after the Hovans took a test called ALCAT. It's a blood test that's supposed to list the foods your body has built up an intolerance to. The parents took the test in hopes of clearing up some of their children's health issues. Some more peaches? As well as some of their own. My husband also has a lot of acid reflux and heartburn, and um, I'm, I was always tired, um, runny nose, sore throat, and so, you know, this was like our last option. We had tried all the antibiotics. Creators say the Alcat checks for food intolerance at a cellular level. Technicians are looking for sensitivities, not allergic reactions. An allergic reaction typically happens immediately. A sensitivity usually builds up over time, triggering the body's immune system, causing inflammation. The body can withstand so much toxicity. And then when you exceed that level, then there's a breakdown. And breakdown in this case means the breakout of some symptoms which could be migraine, arthritis, the inability to lose weight, and so forth. Yeah, we stopped all the pasta sauces. They stopped getting diaper rashes. The Hovens got the results and some nutritional counseling on the foods they needed to eliminate from their diets. Foods in the red area of this chart should be cut out completely. Foods from the yellow or orange area should be eaten in moderation, and foods from the green are a go. Chris had built up an intolerance to red meat. We're just getting frustrated. A staple of his diet for years. Both he and Jamie showed sensitivity to cow's milk. Four weeks after cutting out most of the foods on that red list, Jamie says the family's health problems have cleared up, and they've also shed a few pounds. To us, it was worth it. The way we feel, it's worth, worth putting in the effort to change the eating habits. Now, the cost for the Alcat test can be significant, anywhere from $50 to over $1,000, depending on the number of foods being tested. By the way, insurance coverage is limited. It really just depends on your individual plan. If you'd like more information on the Alcat test...